My name is Max Ludington, the president of the Jacksonville Land Trust. Welcome to the Land Trust Summer Newsletter. Uh, we're really excited to share a great theme this year, which is water and how our conservation work impacts water across Northwest Wyoming. We're gonna talk about a number of projects that we have going in all of our different project areas. Our first topic here is gonna be one of the most common and most popular places to visit water in Teton County, and that's Emily Stevens Pond. That's a conservation easement that was closed in 1992, covering just over 14 acres along the Snake River. I'm Anthony Stevens, uh, born and raised here in Jackson, Wyoming, and we're standing at Emily Stevens Pond. Emily's Pond is a place in Teton County that it has access to the river, it has uh, trails to hike on, a road to, to walk your dog on, and to have skiing access in the winter, and it's a place that, that people can come if they only have 10 minutes but want to get out and enjoy the, the, the great scene that is Wyoming. When I was a kid, uh, my mom built the Iron Rock condominiums, which are kind of adjacent to the to the Emily Stevens Pond. And uh, we had it for a while when a development company had approached my mom about buying it. And she received a, uh, a, a letter in the mail saying that they were, they intended to sue her for access to it. And she came up with the idea with uh, Hank Fibbs, who was her lawyer at the time, to put a conservation easement on it and to donate it to the county so there would always be access for people who wanted to walk dogs and you know, bring their kids here and go fishing and have access to the river. So it became a pretty, uh, a pretty interesting battle that uh, ultimately she won and it, it was the, the brainchild and the start of the Emily Stevens Pond. My daughter, who is named Emily, uh, loves the fact that the pond is named after her. Um, you know, we had to explain to her that's actually your grandmother, but uh, it, uh, it's still a pretty special place and she loves it. She loves coming down here. She loves the fact that it's connected to our park and it's pretty, pretty special and important to her. We're now going to move south from our Teton County projects down to Sublette County in our Green River Valley program. Leslie Steen from Trout Unlimited is going to talk about the ways in which our land protection efforts with agricultural producers protect water rights on those lands, which in turn influence and benefit the wild fisheries that exist in Sublette County. I'm Leslie Steen. I am the Wyoming State Director for Trout Unlimited. We are a national nonprofit organization and we focus on bringing together partners to conserve our cold water fisheries resources. I think water rights are becoming more and more important in some of our basins across the state that are facing drought and more water scarcity. And I think the uh, prime example of this is the Upper Green River watershed in southwest Wyoming. Um, the Upper Green is part of the Colorado River Basin. And as we know, and we've all heard, the Colorado River Basin is, has been experiencing long-term drought and the water in the Upper Green is connected to the Colorado River. And so in the Upper Green, we actually have to deliver a certain amount of water down to a certain point in the Colorado River system called Lee's Ferry. Um, and so that actually means that our water is tied to downstream municipalities like Las Vegas. And so, you, you know, it's interesting when you think about a ranch high up in the Upper Green and the water on that ranch and the water savings potentially that we can work with landowners on that can actually make a difference in the Colorado River Basin. We need to be creative and think of a lot of different solutions for how to not only conserve water at scale across the basin, but are there ways to do that to also make it beneficial to our fisheries? So we've been working with uh, ranchers in the Upper Green to actually conserve water by doing either full or split season fallowing of their fields on a temporary and voluntary basis um, where they actually get compensated for not using the water on a certain por portion of their ranch in a given year. Part of the reason why we've been able to do this innovative work with ranchers in this program called the System Conservation Pilot Program is because of the nearly 20 years of on the ground project work that we've done where we've been able to build those relationships and that trust 
so that when we've then come and said, okay, we've helped you fix this irrigation diversion, we've helped you improve the stream habitat on your ranch, um, and then just put in the time over the years when we've come back to those same landowners and said, we have a new water program and would you consider working with us on it? They've actually been open to that conversation with us. There are a lot of opportunities for Trout Unlimited and the Jackson Hole Land Trust to work together. And I think that the reason is that the Land Trust works with conservation-minded landowners, private landowners across the state, um, and many of those landowners have water rights, are irrigating, they have streamside properties, and they're interested in habitat protection across the board, whether it's land or the aquatic side of things. Um, I have a soft spot for the Land Trust because I worked there for four years. Um, it before I worked at Trout Unlimited and so um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how we can work together more. Moving from private land to private water rights up to one of our public access properties, Zach Anders is going to talk about the R Park and the efforts we have there to not only restore flows and improve the waterway through the R Park, but also the ways in which the community is celebrating the 10-year anniversary of that space. Hi, my name is Zach Andrus and I'm the Director of Community Conservation for the Jackson Hole Land Trust. I'm standing out here at our park with the Heron Pond behind me and the Wetland Pond in front of me. And if you can hear uh, in the background, there's some noise. Uh, Wyoming Department of Transportation is doing some work here on the Highway 22-390 corridor. Uh, as part of that work, they did some wetland restoration work here in our park. So we have two new wetland areas here, um, which should bring some awesome species and support better moose habitat. So we're super excited for that. Our park is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. If you were out here about 11 or 12 years ago, uh, behind me would have been an active gravel pit. So the park has come a really long way since then. And as part of the 10th anniversary capital campaign, we are raising money to fund uh, further water infrastructure improvements, ensuring that we get a consistent flow of water from the Snake River and creating a pond management plan which will steward the ponds into the future. We absolutely love the ponds out here. Just yesterday, I received a photo uh, from a father whose kid caught a massive cutthroat trout out here and their parent was just so excited uh, that they caught that here and uh, was very grateful for our management of this place. In 2023, the Jackson Land Trust opened our newest regional program in Park County. Our efforts up there to protect lands that that community values, including some that are critical to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and to the agricultural heritage of that community. We closed our first conservation easement there in November 2023 and one of our advisory council members in Park County, Ann Young, is going to talk about a new project that we have to protect a property along Sage Creek. Hi, I'm Ann Young and I'm a board member of Park County Open Lands, but I'm also the owner of Sage Creek Ranch, which is about six miles from Cody, Wyoming. I've lived here for about 35 years and I'll tell you, after 35 years, you really fall in love with the place. When I came here, it was a wreck. The sheds were falling down. It was terribly overgrazed. Um, there were about 110 rodeo horses picking away at the grass. The stream banks of Sage Creek were all worn down. The pond barely existed. It really wasn't much of a place for wildlife at all. But after my husband and I spent a lot of time working on it, we turned it into what I think of as being quite a magical place. The Sandhill Cranes have this wonderful call that wake you up in the morning. And down at the pond in the spring, the pintailed ducks arrive. There are mergansers down there, mallards, muskrats, otters. It's an amazing place, amazing wetland. Knowing and realizing how important this habitat is, luckily the Park County Open Land Trust had just begun 
and I was able to apply through the Jackson Hole Land Trust for an easement. They have been terrific. They really know how to treat their clients, to help us with all the ins and outs. This important land is about to come under easement. All 127 acres of hay meadow, pond, the stream, Sage Creek, and all the wetland that surrounds it. I'm particularly excited about the easement because I can see the possibilities of some of the neighbors joining me and perhaps we could have a whole little necklace of open space all along Sage Creek as it dumps into the Shoshone River. A great fact about it is that there are lots of lakes nearby. There's an alkali lake about a mile to the west which is very rich in biodiversity because these kind of lakes are very important and it's a compliment to my pond. I'm so glad we can keep this small patch of land open. It's such an important riparian area for all the wildlife and for people, because people can enjoy the open space too. It's so important, it's disappearing very quickly. Thanks Anne for all of your work and dedication supporting Park County. And thanks all of you for joining us for our summer newsletter. We hope you've enjoyed this theme about water. It truly is the most critical resource that we protect across our regional programs and it's something that unites all of the communities where we work. The work that we do would not be possible without the support of so many of you. We have so many people that are involved from landowners to board members to donors to volunteers. The communities that support our work truly are what sustains us and makes this possible. The success of our organization depends on all of you and thank you for your continued and ongoing support for our work.